Hello, my name is Teresa Šimová and in this video I'm gonna talk about researcher identity, about research profiles that can help you to identify your work from the work of other authors. What is a research identity? A research ID is a unique persistent identification number that identifies you as a researcher and ensure links between you and your publication, activities or grants. Some research IDs are associated with a commercial publishers or databases. Other research IDs are independent and non-commercial. As you can see here on the slide, John Smith is registered in ORCID, which is one of the research ID. So John Smith is registered there 67,000 times. Therefore, it's really necessary to distinguish your research using identifiers other than just your name. Solution to this problem are scientific ID profiles such as ORCID ID, which you can see on the slide, or Pavlons or Scopus Outdoor Identifier. Let's talk about it a little more. So why you should care about your research identity? Many researchers share the same name while others have different names during their careers or different variation of the same name. As a result, it can be difficult to link a researcher with her publication and research outputs across of her career. You can use your research identity to promote the visibility and the academic and social impact of your work. I recommend you that you check your research identity, make any necessary adjustment, and then make a habit of keeping your research identity up to date. Research profiles and IDs can be used to different your work from the work of other authors with similar names. It can be also used to quickly and efficiently locate metrics such as citation counts, uh, your age index for all of your publication. And also it helps you to promote your research. Let's start with the first identificator. First is ORCID, Open Researcher and Contributor ID. ORCID provides a persistent digital identifier that helps researchers and scholars to distinguish their research activities from those of others with similar names. Registration of ORCID ID is free and the link for the registration you're gonna find below the video. ORCID can be linked to the scientific identificators such as Publons and Scopus ID, but we will talk about it later. On the slide, you can see what an ORCID ID looks like. Be aware, don't create duplicates profile, only have one profile at a time. If it's happened to you that you forget, for example, your password and you create a second profile, you can combine your profiles later. So it's very important to you that you have only one ORCID ID profile. Here you can see a preview of the ORCID ID. You can see that you can add publication, this is the low part, the works. You can also add employers, education, an overview of grants that you received and so on. You can also add any membership of certain organization and so on. ORCID works little as a form of CV for scientists. On the left hand side, on this left hand panel, you can also see that you can enter your other names or the names under which you appear in publication, which is useful, for example, if a scientist gets married. On the left side, you can also see the possibility of adding a country of origin, some keywords that best describe your research. You can also add a social network site here. Or another things 
is uh, to link ORFSID to other identifiers. That's, for example, your research ID, or now we call it research ID Poblans. We will talk about it in a while. So you can also add here other IDs. And the last thing you can see on the left side is the ability to edit emails. I suggest you put both your work or university email here and also your private one in the case you change your university, your workplace. And here you can see how it looks like uh, when someone has an ORCID ID attached to an article. It works as a link to your profile in ORCID ID. It's possible that someone might be interested in your article and want to find some more of your work. And the easiest way to do is to click on this uh, link, on this scientific uh, ORCID ID, and it will automatically redirect him into the page that lists all your publications. Let's go together through another identificator, which is Scopus Outer ID. Scopus Outer ID is your outer profile in the Scopus database, and it's an integrated part of the database. It is good to ensure that your outer profile is updated because it makes it easier to identify your publication and can cal calculate your age index and your citation. Scopus Outer Profile is created automatically after your publication is indexed in Scopus. You cannot create it by yourself, it's been done automatically. It is possible to link Scopus Outer ID to ORCID and just transfer data to your ORCID profile. Unfortunately, I don't have a record in the Scopus database yet, so for a demonstration I choose the profile of our rector of Professor Sklenička. As you can see, in the basic profile it is possible to see basic data such as a professor's affiliation with our university, Underneath, you can see his Scopus ID and his uh, ORCID ID. And also, you can see that Professor Sklenčka has profile on Mendeley. So here you can see also his profile on Mendeley. It's up to you what information will be here and what information will be public. You can easily manage it by clicking on Edit Profile. That is also relevant if you need to change your name or some publication, mention your name without diacritics and so on. So for that reason you can click just to edit profile and you can change whatever you want. If you look below, uh, you can see various scientific metrics here. For example, the number of citations, the number of documents Professor Sklenička has indexed in Scopus, his age index, uh, citation trends, and so on. If you then scroll down, uh, to s you will see he all his publications that are indexed in the Scopus. Let's now move to the last researcher ID, and that's Publant. Publant is an identifier operating with the Web of Science database. Previously, Pablons called research ID, so you can be a little confused because sometimes you will find information research ID and sometimes about Pablons, but now research ID and Pablons is the same thing. Pablons is uh, author profile in the Web of Science and it makes it easier to identify your publication and calculate your age index and other metrics. You can create profile by yourself, just you have to just log in into Publons and then you can uh, edit your profile. Let's take a look what a profile in Publons look like. We can see there are Similar features like in ORCID, you can for example add institution to which you have affiliation here, 
You can also put links to your Linked profiles or ResearchK or some other social networks and other links. You can see here the publication that you have published and also uh, they are indexed in the VOS. So all the publications that are indexed in the VOS, Web of Science, sorry, so you will find here. It's also good that you can link Pablons to Orsid and it will automatically update everything for you. So if there will be some new publication in the Web of Science, so it will automatically appear in the Orsid ID. Another good feature of Publance is that uh, it will try to record your uh, peer review works. So for example, if you are a reviewer in some scholarly journals, you can easily put a record of each peer review that you made into Publance. If you are interested in where your research stands, for example, how many people cite you, what's your age index, and so on. Publance offers you exactly this function too. You just have to click on the metrics and you will see a chart like, like this one, where you can see your impact in time and other metrics. As you can see, my profile is so far quite empty and I hope that your profile will be uh, much better, you will have much more citation and higher ha index. Okay guys, that's it from me. If you have any question, just write us an email or write us a comment below the video. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.